Hello to Darkness344 here, and in today's video I'll be showing off this um, instruction cache. Um, there's probably some short, um, quick um, montage with some of the specs of this um, in the beginning of the video, but basically, um, to, put, to break this down into more um, human terms, I guess, uh, what this is is 64 bytes of um, instruction cache, right? And then we have 1k. Uh, so 1k bytes of um, serial hex memory. What this basically does is this um, 1024 bytes of memory is divided up into 16 pages of 64 bytes each. So what happens is when we want to um, load a page we'll basically select one of the pages from out of the 16 uh, send it serially down these wires uh, through here converting and then down into these cells where they save the value and I'll, I'll go through it a bit more in detail later in the video. What this basically allows us to do is have a massive amount of memory but still access it fairly fast without too much delay. So first of all how does this memory work, specifically the barrel memory? So as you know I've kind of teased off barrel memory uh, in one of my shorts earlier. Um, and it was this design over here, I'm pretty sure. So, I, I basically made this design to um, work serially, however, I've, I've come up with much better designs, as you can see over there. So first of all, we have to understand how we can represent data in Minecraft um, using barrels, or, or chests, or, or basically just um, items that can store MBT data. So over here, we have a written comparator. And what we can do is, when we place a barrel down like this, the comparator will basically um, read what's inside of the barrel or the barrel's um, data and it will output a signal strength um, that according to what's inside. Um, with signal strength, um, we have signal strength 0 to signal strength 15, 15 being the strongest. However, if, if you recognize that, um, hexadecimal also ranges from 0 to 15. So with a barrel like this, we can actually represent um, one barrel as one hexadecimal value. So for instance, if we just put in one item like this, we get out a signal strength of one. But say we um, get like a full barrel, for instance, like this one I've made earlier, we get out a signal strength of 15, as you can see, uh, which means that we can actually encode data um, into hexadecimal and store it inside barrels like this. Unfortunately, we have to pick up all the shovels as well. So that means we can get quite clever with our designs because over here, I've got this very simple um, sign of here. Let's actually get a barrel so we don't get any more shovels. But we can place down barrels like this and then use um, a comparator lock like this, like we've done with our RAM and stuff. And it means we can decide to um, read the barrel, what, what the content of the barrel is in, to this um, address over here. So this design doesn't actually work properly because uh, the problem with signal strength is that every block you add uh, reduces by one. So in between these memory cells, I'd also have to have comparators. But yeah, that's that's this design wasn't really meant to be uh, good anyway. So now that you've got the basics of um, understanding how we can store hexadecimal values inside barrels, uh, I'm going to show you this design over here. So this is, uh, I've just designed this real quick and um, what this th does is basically, um, it's basically a line of barrels and each of these barrels will store a hexadecimal character. And because we don't actually need random access on these barrels, so we don't need to like read this one, then say read that one, then read this one. We read them sequentially, like so this one, then this one, then this one, then this one. Um, we're basically reading um, uh, reading the data out uh, in a serial form. So what we can do is actually, um, if we turn this on, because this is normally meant to be high, we can actually send a pulse like this and read the data out of these barrels. And the way this memory works is basically each of these barrels will have a value, so let's put something in, right? This comparator will read this value, then it will output um, the value over here through this barrel um, into this uh, redstone dust over here, because this barrel is acting like a solid block. So that means any data in here will be output over here. The problem about that is that all of these barrels will be outputting at once, so we have to have a line over here 
with repeaters um, that go into the comparator that's reading the barrel um, with an item that cancel the comparator out. So because this comparator is on subtract mode, um, it'll take whatever data is in here and then minus a full signal strength of 15 because we're using repeaters. So even if this is 15, 15 minus 15 is zero, so it will output zero signal strength. Then these comparators over here, all they do is just make sure the signal strength can travel down properly. Because if we just replaced them with redstone, uh, well, one, this comparator would get um, powered by them, and two, um, the signal strength would degrade, and we want to preserve all the data. So that means um, if we pulse this line like this, um, What's happening is that we access this one, it starts reading down this line, then we access this one, it goes down this line, then we access this one, it goes down this line, etc. And basically, because we're doing it sequentially and we've done it with proper timings, it means that um, when we read this data, it won't actually, um, this one won't get mixed in with this one, it'll, it'll all be separate. Um, uh, I don't I don't really know how to explain that. So so you won't get any corruption because of the timings, which means you'll get a output, a hexadecimal output, but in a serial form. So for those who um, haven't been completely lost yet, um, I have the same design over here. Well, we've just repeated on one tick instead, and we output um, the serial hexadecimal down this line over here, and all of these lines are properly synced up. So. Um, this cell will reach the output over here the exact same time this cell will because um, I've, I've done the sync on the control wires below so then what happens is we um, go through this block over here and each of these um, since we have eight of these barrels as you can see uh, eight barrels um, is eight hexadecimal values and eight hexadecimal values uh, turns into four bytes because one hexadecimal value is equivalent to four bits so two barrels um, is going to be one byte so since we have eight we have four bytes so what happens is we have an output here and all this uh, all these repeaters are is just a way of sending signal strength down uh, but without using a bunch of comparators so it, it just means that we reduce the latency of this design so the signal strength comes out of here it goes into this comparator which just goes along down into this over here so what this is is a um, hexadecimal um, analog hexadecimal to a, um, a digital binary i guess uh, they're, they're both kind of digital but basically what happens is we put in a hexadecimal value over here and it will give us our binary value over here. But because we're inputting serial hexadecimal, this um, converter will output serial binary. So we have eight of these converters in this memory. So one, two, three, four, and then five, six, and over here, seven and eight. And each of these converters is responsible for converting one hexadecimal value into four bits so now we have the four bits of um a serial binary and what this will do is go along this um you could technically call it a shift register but what it basically does is it goes along these repeaters uh, so they unlock for a specified time then they'll relock when the data hits the end so this first value will go through here get converted go along these and when it hits the end over here these repeaters will lock again and it'll be stored in this repeater basically and so the second value over here will go along um, at the same time the first value is going and will be stored in this repeater over here because it's um, it has two ticks of delay from the first one so that's that's basically how we get um, we convert the serial hex into serial binary and then the serial binary just back into uh, and we just save it in these cells over here because we we lock it in almost like a shift register so for like the two people that haven't um clicked away from this video now and don't know what i'm talking about um we've basically been able to divide this large memory up into um smaller chunks well uh, pages of 64 bytes and we load each of these 64 bytes into this 64 bytes um uh, well registers so let's do a demonstration so for instance um on the first cell say i was to load uh just oops yeah 
uh, just a hexadecimal value of one, then say another zero, then a one. And then let's say we'll do a value of 15 for this one. So when we output it, we should be getting one, zero, one, 15. So now if we swap the page to page zero, so let me just uh, turn the address to zero and then just click this down like that. As you can see, our data went through, it's going through down like this and the repeat is a lock. So as we can see, we have a value of one over here. So we're going to disregard the last four bits because we're only working with uh, a nibble at the moment. So one, zero, one, and then the last one is 15. It's kind of hard to see. So in spectator mode, we can see it kind of a bit better. So as you can see, we have one, 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 which is 15. So yeah, that, that basically means that it's worked properly. So what this allows us to do is just have a very large amount of memory and address it quite quickly because now that it's stored in these registers over here, we can actually address one of these individual registers. So for instance, the first register over here that stored the value of um, the, the value of one, we can actually um, address, I think it was, um, so uh, one, 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 one was the actual address of that register. And when we read the data, we get a one. Now, if we go the one before that, we should be getting a zero. Then the one before that, we should be getting a one. And the one before that, we'll be getting a um, 15. So there we go, that's how that works. So now what we can do is basically plug, um, say a program counter into this part over here, and then use uh, this memory as the program memory. And whenever we want to go over 64 um, lines of code, um, it'll do a page swap but it will swap from um, say this page to this page instead. And then that means we can have um, 1K of total memory while still uh, being fairly fast. So yeah, I hoped this explanation kind of worked. I'll do a much better scripted one later when I actually show off the computer. But um, yeah, sorry if this isn't very um, understandable. But yeah, I hope you liked this video. Please like and subscribe and I'm out.